Hello everyone. Once again, PR season is upon us. So today I'm going to give some predictions on who could be added in the next wave. Before I start giving out those predictions, I need to lay out the criteria though. First of all, research is a yearly collaboration with World of Warships, and as such all ships must be from there. I can't just make up some ships, so if you're after, say, an Italian carrier, sorry. Also, I'm ignoring super ships. There's no precedent on them being added yet, and they're a bit above what we work with. That being said, things are a little different now, because of some geopolitical fuckery regarding the war in Ukraine that has split the game. I'll put a wall of text explaining it for you to pause and read if you're interested, but to keep things short, I will be exclusively pulling from the international wargaming version. Secondly, they must be paper ships, or one of Wargaming's more fanciful creations. No real steel. That would defeat the point of the collab, because those ships can be added in normal events whenever the developers feel like it. Third, PR ships come with PR gear. There needs to be enough new equipment between them for at least five new pieces with a single rainbow. And finally is the four versus one rule. More of an observation than a rule, but ever since Series 4, waves have had a bias towards one side of the Second World War. Series 4 and 6 featured four Axis ships and a single Allies. In Series 5, this was reversed with four Allies and one Axis. Since these alternate, this series will likely have an Allies bias, assuming they keep to the trend. And I don't want to alarm anyone, but this might be our first Iron Bloodless PR wave if they keep to it. More on that in a sec. This first prediction is less who gets it and what hull type, but rather, who will it be? Because during the CN anniversary livestream, it was announced that Sardigna would be getting a heavy cruiser in this season. And the way it's worded implies she'll be their first DR, and Rainbow as a whole. Halla fucking Luya. The fact they still don't have a Rainbow while everyone else has multiple is bullshit, even the Soviets have two. To say less of the Sakura 6, 7 if you count Udachi's retro, 8 for the upcoming one they'll get in September, save some for the rest of us you greedy assholes. Tangent aside, there are 3, possibly 4 options for an Italian decisive heavy cruiser. Those being Napoli, Brindisi and Venezia. Michelangelo is the potential fourth, and a bit of a weird case since Arzalane sometimes lumps large and heavy cruisers together. Assuming heavy cruiser means heavy cruiser, Michelangelo is disqualified. And I'm choosing to do the same for Brindisi, for being a lesser Venezia. That leaves us with the aforementioned Venezia and Napoli. Napoli would be more mechanically interesting of the two being our first heavy armour heavy cruiser, as well as having a smokescreen and a range of secondary options. Be they torpedoes, light cruiser guns, destroyer guns, effects force support, or perhaps even a ghost gun to go with them. She'd also bring her 254mm 60 caliber guns, which is where things get uncertain. We just got a UR heavy cruiser gun last season, the Hindenburg gun. And while there's nothing to say they can't do two in a row, I don't believe it's likely. A 10 inch heavy cruiser gun at Gold isn't particularly convincing either, so. Venezia then? What does she bring to the table? She is pretty well armoured, but not as much as Napoli, so she'd lose the heavy armour and not be as tanky. She'd also lose access to light cruiser guns, but a main gun DBS would be higher thanks to an immense 15 gun main battery. Said main guns being a 55 calibre triple version of the existing Italian heavy cruiser guns which could easily be gold or rainbow. If Napoli is a powerful middle ground between heavy cruisers and large cruisers, Venezia leans more towards the heavy cruiser side. Alright, that's the first one down, but that still leaves a single burning question. Who gets the other DR? Well, that's a tough one, since there's only one tier 10 per season, and I've just given that to the Italians, limiting my options severely. The Americans got Kearsarge last year, so they're out. As are the French, since their only option is another large cruiser, and given their last DR was Brest, who was also a large cruiser... The fact they just got a two for isn't all that relevant, it's not uncommon for a faction to triple dip in the space of a year. China's out too, since World of Warships doesn't have Chinese ships, they have Pan-Asian ships. 
The other options are either not Chinese, a upgraded Harbin, or a heavy cruiser which would make both DRs the same hull types, something that hasn't been done so far. So that leaves the Soviets and the British. The Soviets do have more options. Big plans but no ability to carry them out will do that, but I'm going to go with the British. As they've received DRs in series 3 and 5, and while twice is a coincidence, not a pattern, so far it seems Ironblood gets one on even seasons, while Royal Navy gets the odds. So which Royal Navy do I believe will be joining us? I think it'll be a battleship, or rather, battle cruiser, Duncan. I understand this would be the third UR level BB this year, but locking myself out of tier 10 means there are no viable candidates in the other hull types. They're even not enough to be a decisive or real. No, the misery of being the most powerful, and later, second most powerful navy in the world at the time. So why Duncan? Lion seems like the obvious pick, but let's be honest, she's gonna be a gotcha you are, not a research one. Scarlet Thunder is just Duncan repackaged with a new set of gimmicks. And Marlborough is here too. The Royal Navy is lacking a big smack the shit out of you battleship. Vanguard is good, but she's more of a supporter that can hold her own well. Also the guns. Duncan comes with the 419mm main guns that World of Warships is addicted to for some reason. Seriously, there's more ships with the 419s than the actual 406s. But at least here it makes sense. The G3 Battlecruiser did consider 16.5 inch, 419mm guns briefly. Those 419s will be this season's rainbow gear piece. On to the rest of the season with our first priority which will go to the Dragon Empery. Between the three DDGs, Chenhai's Retrofit and Huan Shang, the Chinese have a few backline options, but nothing particularly stellar. So let's give them something to work for in Battleship Sun Yat-sen. Basically the Sino-Soviet equivalent to Georgia. I understand that there may be some confusion with having ships with very similar names, but counterpoint, St. Louis and St. Louis. We're just going to have to learn to specify sun when talking about the battleship. Not sure how I feel about putting 457mm guns at gold. I suppose it could be like the Yamato gun with a long reload and similar damage, but only firing in volleys of 2 instead of 3. Besides, there's a non-zero chance we get the triple version someday to fill the rainbow roll. The next PR is the Northern Parliament's Piotr Bagration. This is another mechanically interesting one as she sits between a light and heavy cruiser. She has an armoured belt comparable to heavy cruisers, but her firepower sits between the two at nine 180mm rifles. In this case, a tanky light cruiser capable of equipping heavy cruiser guns, with the triple 180s being low damage, fast firing heavy cruiser guns, kind of like a shitty Des Moines gun. Either a French or American ship will be the finisher, and initially I was going to give it to the French, since the Americans usually sit out the old numbered PR waves, but, you know, France has eaten good over the course of PR. The only season they've skipped out on is PR4, so I think I'll break tradition and give it to the Eagle Union. And the ship I think they'll get is Battleship Kansas, representing the 1920s South Dakota design, being entirely focused on raw shelling like a taste of Montana, but with no fancy barrages or support skills. Just big guns and lots of them. Of course, she'd bring her triple 406s, being the gold middle ground between the Iowa and North Carolina guns. And there you have it. But since I'm feeling charitable, here's some honourable mentions for the factions that didn't make the cut. Japan gets battlecruiser Yumihari. The Germans have anti-aircraft light cruiser Weisbaden. I am so sorry I'll never try to pronounce that again. And the French get light cruiser Bayard. However, my final predictions for PR7 are stands. Italian heavy cruiser Venezia. British battle cruiser Duncan, Port Scarlet Thunder. Chinese battleship Sun Yat-sen. Soviet light cruiser Piotr Bagration and American battleship Kansas. I tried to keep it consistent with the previous seasons, but to be honest, a lot of my decision making came down to, there's nothing to say they can't do this, but they haven't previously. But Manju does like to break their established traditions, sometimes. 
It's a little main fleet heavy, but the past two waves were more Vanguard focused, so it balances out. Another destroyer and carrier this season, I'm afraid. Given the Italians, the tier 10 kind of fucked myself over in that regard. Kind of hard to do those on an allied bias season anyway, since most of them are real. But enough from me. Let's hear your predictions, or just even a wish list really, I'll read either. So for now, fair winds and following seas.